Hello, hello, and welcome to myfinanceteacher.org. In this video, as one of the viewers requested quite a while ago, I'm going to look at gold price versus silver price. So let's see how their relative performance is doing. We will also try to have a look at the connection between uh, the prices of these precious metals and the general stock market. Although we're not going to do any rigorous analysis here, we will be able to have a quick look whether gold is actually a protection from the stock market volatility. Is gold a safe haven, so to speak? And we will also try to have a quick test without any rigorous analysis to see if silver is more of an industrial metal compared to gold. Before we continue, let me remind you guys to subscribe to the channel if you haven't and click that bell notification. Thanks a lot. First of all, let's start with gold versus silver. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the beginning of the last eight intermediate cycles in gold and silver since the beginning of the bull market in the precious metals in December 2015. Here the blue line is the percentage change in gold price since the December 2015. During the first few months of that intermediate cycle until about July. And the purple line is the percentage change in silver price. As we see here, of course, silver outperforms gold. During that intermediate cycle, silver increased by nearly 50%, whereas gold has only increased by nearly 30%. And this is not new for you guys. You know that volatility in silver price is higher than that in gold price. But what I want to look at is whether we can find any patterns between these blue and purple lines without any proper analysis, just using our visual judgment. It looks like in the first few months of this intermediate cycle, silver was not performing as well as gold, and it overtook gold when the intermediate cycle was approaching its top. Looking at the next intermediate cycle, which started in the middle of 2016, we see again, silver of course outperforms gold to the upside, high volatility in silver, and in this intermediate cycle it doesn't look like silver was lagging behind gold in the first couple of months of the intermediate cycle. We also notice that this was a left translated intermediate cycle where the top prices were reached very quickly and the declining phase of this intermediate cycle was a very long one. The next intermediate cycle started in December 2016. Again, we see that silver outperformed gold just a little bit, gaining around 16% in that intermediate cycle, whereas gold only gained about 14 or 15%. Looking at the early part of the intermediate cycle, we see that silver was lagging behind gold a little bit for just about a month. Next, looking at the intermediate cycle that started in July 2017, again we see that silver does outperform gold, and in the early part of the intermediate cycle, silver did not lag behind. The next cycle started in December 2017, again silver outperforms gold, and no lagging behind in the beginning of that intermediate cycle. Next intermediate cycle starting in August 2018, Silver might actually be outperforming gold if we move this chart to the beginning of silver's intermediate cycle somewhere around early September. Whereas gold intermediate cycle started a little bit earlier and silver was in fact lagging in the first few months. Next intermediate cycle started in May 2019. Again, silver does outperform gold, high volatility in silver price and in the first few months of that intermediate cycle, silver does lag behind gold. And lastly, the current intermediate cycle that began in December last year. Again, it looks like at the beginning of that intermediate cycle, for just under a month, silver was lagging behind gold a little bit. So looking at this period of a bull market in precious metals since December 2015, in five out of eight intermediate cycles, silver was lagging behind gold in the first several weeks, one to two months, and only later silver was catching up and actually outperforming gold. 
looking at only the last eight intermediate cycles might not be very conclusive since our analysis only includes eight data points here, eight intermediate cycles, and it's not a rigorous analysis. But we can at least make a small note to ourselves saying that there is a possibility that silver often, and by often I mean in 60% of the chances, that's five out of the eight intermediate cycles, does underperform gold at the beginning of the intermediate cycle and tends to catch up and outperform later on. It kind of makes sense after an intermediate cycle low when the prices collapse and the market sentiments are pessimistic, people might be afraid to put money into something volatile. Investors might feel a little more comfortable with cautiously entering gold market rather than silver market at the beginning of the intermediate cycle as gold decline reverses and a gradual uptrend begins. Later on, after one or two months, once people see that precious metals have really finished dropping, once the sentiments on the markets improve, people might feel a little more confident to put their money into something more volatile. So that's one conclusion looking at gold versus silver prices. Next, I want to introduce the stock market into our analysis, and here we have a simple regression. In the top part, I'm regressing the change in gold price, and this is weekly data, on the change in the S&P 500, with a time trend thrown in as well. I have checked for stationarity for unit root in both the first differences or the change in weekly gold price and the first difference or the change in S&P 500. Both are shown to be stationary. This is the data again for that same bull market in precious metals since December 2015. I didn't put silver here as I don't think that gold price depends on silver as gold market is larger than the silver market. So looking at the results over here, we see that the first difference in stocks, the change in the S&P 500, does not have a significant effect on gold, as the p-value here is much greater than 0.05, which means that we cannot say for sure if the changes in S&P 500 affect the changes in gold price or not. So this might be some sort of a proof that gold price is uncorrelated with S&P 500, possibly with the general stock market. In the lower part, we are looking at how the changes in the price of silver depend on the changes in the price of gold and changes in the S&P 500, with a time trend thrown in as well. Looking at the results over here in the lower part of this table, we see that p-value is very, very small both in relation to the changes in gold price and in relation to the changes in S&P 500, which means both of them do have an effect on the changes in silver price. And from this column for coefficients, we see that the effect is positive, meaning that if gold price goes up, silver price goes up as well, and vice versa, if gold price goes down, silver price goes down as well. But interestingly enough, same thing happens in the relationship between the S&P 500 and silver. When the changes in S&P 500 are positive, when S&P 500 is going up, silver is also going up, and vice versa. If S&P 500 is dropping, silver often drops as well. So once we contrast this result with the result we saw in gold, when S&P 500 didn't seem to have any significant effect on gold price, I think we might conclude that silver is really a bit of a more of an industrial metal compared to gold. So possibly for that reason, because silver is more of an industrial metal than gold, silver price dropped so much with the recent collapse in the stock markets. Unfortunately, silver is currently even below the price in December 2015 where supposedly the bull market for precious metals started, whereas gold is still far above that price. For gold, the bottom of December 2015 is below 1,100, whereas current price on gold is somewhere above 1,400. 
So there you go, a little bit on gold price versus silver price with the effect of the stock markets considered as well. Let me know what do you guys think on gold versus silver. If the bull market in precious metals continues, which way should we allocate our investments in precious metals? But before you start typing those comments, remember to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and good luck in your trades.